Welcome back to the Immerse channel. My name is Josh on the Immerse team. And in this video, I'm gonna be sharing with you three major tips in getting the lowest latency possible when connecting your computer to Immerse. Before we get started, we would love if you'd hit that like button and subscribe to stay up to date with anything and everything Immerse is putting out. If you're experiencing latency, <laughs> feels like a pharmaceutical commercial. If you feel slow, lethargic, or like you want to punch a hole through your laptop screen, you may be experiencing symptoms of latency. Please consult your physician. JK, you don't need to be talking to your doctor about that. We have tens of thousands of users who use Immerse, and a good majority of them are able to work in VR just fine. But let's be honest, if that latency hits and your screens are moving slow, it is the, the worst. And then you're not working faster in VR, you're working slower. And gosh darn it, that goes against everything we believe in. So we made this video to give you tips on how to reduce latency and get the optimal performance out of your setup. Be sure to stick around till the end where we talk about Wi-Fi Direct and how it results in zero latency. Let's begin. Number one, computer specs matter. Now it's not everything when it comes to latency but it does certainly play a part. It's like you're making cookies and the recipe calls for a dash of salt. Now, if you don't add the salt, the cookies will taste just fine. But if you do add the salt, then it's a little bit more than adding salt to a cookie, but you get the picture. All right, here are the supported specs to use Immersed across Mac, Windows, and Linux. You'll also find this info in the description below if you need it for reference. Now, if you're running an older system than what's specified here, unfortunately, you won't be able to use Immersed. How should I say this in the most loving way possible? Get a new computer. If your specs are only a little bit better than the basic requirements, it doesn't necessarily mean you're going to face latency, but that might be a reason why. All right, the kicker here is your graphics card. Your GPU is heavily utilized when streaming your computer in Immersed. Now, just to give you a reference point, for best performance, we recommend the NVIDIA GeForce 1050 or comparable GPU. Now that's just to give you an idea of a GPU that works well with Immersed. But don't worry if you don't have that specific one, your GPU could work as well, so just give it a try. Now for you Mac users, we've seen the M1 Max, similar to what I have here, perform super well in Immersed. So if you have one of those bad boys, then have fun flying through the metaverse. You could have a super powerful GPU, but if your router is slow, then you'll probably still experience latency. And if that's the case, then what are we doing right now? What are we, what are we here for? Which brings us to our next major factor in reducing latency, routers. Didn't see that one coming, did you? I've been known to be sneaky. <laughs> when it comes to latency, what we found is your router matters even more than your computer specs. Remember that cookie example I shared with you earlier? Well, if the computer specs are the salt, then the router is the sugar. Pretty important part of the cookie if you ask me. Now, the first thing you wanna consider in regards to routers are frequency bands. If you have a dual or tri-band router, you wanna make sure to connect to the five gigahertz band, not the 2.4 gigahertz band. So why is five gigahertz better than 2.4 gigahertz? Let's go to science class. Welcome to science class. 2.4 gigahertz frequency band has much longer waves, which means it can travel longer distances. However, data travels relatively slow. Five gigahertz frequency band, on the other hand, has much shorter waves. What the heck is that? Sorry, I'm a perfectionist. Five gigahertz frequency band has much shorter waves, which means it travels shorter distances. However, data transfer is much faster, all right? But because of these shorter waves, five gigahertz has a harder time traveling past objects like ceilings, floors, or even walls, all right? So for optimal performance, you wanna be as close to the router as possible, even have a direct line of sight to it, and then you can take advantage of these shorter waves and faster data transfer speeds when connecting to the five gigahertz frequency band. My job here is done. Now to find out what band you're connected to, typically your Wi-Fi network will say whether it's five gigahertz or 2.4 gigahertz in the Wi-Fi network name. But if you're one of those people who renamed your network, Abraham Linksys, drop it like it's hotspot, nacho Wi-Fi, or even worse, QT74UB9G2. One eternity later. Then you're gonna have to do a little bit more digging, but don't worry, we got you. If you're on a Mac, hold down the option and control keys, and then click the Wi-Fi symbol on the top right and look for channel. On Windows, you wanna click the Wi-Fi icon on the taskbar, then click properties, and you wanna look for network band. One thing to point out is that your internet connection speed has nothing to do with screen latency. And that's because your computer is being streamed locally on your network 
and is not going out to the internet. Now, the only time that matters is if you're sharing screen with somebody in Immersed, because that person might be living in Seattle and you might be living in New York City, and then your internet speeds matter because you're gonna need the internet to communicate with somebody who's not in your local network. The best routers you can get today are Wi-Fi 6 enabled, and they help tremendously, especially if you have multiple devices connected to your network. You might be surprised by how many things you actually have connected to your network. Your phone, however many computers you have in your home or office, any smart devices like a smart assistant, thermostat, security cameras, doorbells, a smart toaster even. Man, even toasters are smart these days. I mean, what's next? Smart robots? <laughs> Older routers that are not Wi-Fi 6 enabled will distribute bandwidth evenly across all of your devices, even though your computer needs more than the smart toaster. On the other hand, a Wi-Fi 6 enabled router will distribute bandwidth based on the demand of the device itself, which means if your computer needs more bandwidth, it'll get more than the toaster. So you have the fast computer, you have the Wi-Fi 6 tri-band router, but you say, Josh, that's just not cutting it for me. I want to take things to the next level. Are you sure you want that? Do, do you know what that might mean for you and your productivity levels? You know not what you ask. But hey, ask and you shall receive. It's called Wi-Fi Direct, and it results in practically zero latency. And it's blazing fast. When I say blazing, I mean blazing. There are three ways to do this. Either your computer already has Wi-Fi Direct natively, or you get a Wi-Fi Direct adapter. And then finally, the last option is to hardwire directly to your router. Let's talk about running Wi-Fi Direct natively first. If you're using Windows, you may be in luck because most PCs have Wi-Fi Direct already built in. You can follow the instructions in the description below to get that set up. If you have a Mac or are using an older Windows computer that doesn't have native Wi-Fi Direct, then you'll have to buy a Wi-Fi Direct adapter. We recommend the Edimax AC1200. It's the Wi-Fi Direct adapter that many of our users use, but please check compatibility with your machine before purchasing. We have a link in the description below if you wanna take a look at the Edimax adapter. So if neither of those options work for you, you can't do native Wi-Fi Direct or the Wi-Fi Direct adapter is not compatible with your machine, then hardwiring your computer to your router is your next option. I'm actually running one of the M1 Max and neither the native or Wi-Fi adapter options work for me. So I actually use the hardwired option a lot to get the best performance when I'm working in Immersed. And let me tell you, it is fast. Hardlining allows your computer's Wi-Fi card to connect to your headset, while the wire makes sure that your computer can access the internet. Again, step-by-step -step instructions are in the description below. Trust me, if those other two options didn't work for you, the hardwired Wi-Fi direct option is great if you have direct access to the router that your network runs off of. Personally, the Wi-Fi direct adapter option is the best in my opinion because it keeps you mobile. You can literally work from your home or a coffee shop and still get an awesome connection in Immersed. Given, the coffee shop should at least have a decent router. I cannot stress enough how clutch Wi-Fi Direct actually is. We are constantly iterating and working to reduce latency in Immersed. With working in the metaverse becoming a reality, the issue of latency will become less and less common. Most of our users don't face issues with latency, but everybody's setup is different, so inevitably, some people will. So we make these videos to help you find the ideal configuration so you can be more productive using Immersed. And if there's anything else that you want us to cover in these videos, drop them in the comments below. And if there's a lot of people talking about it, then we'll make a video on it. Also, tell us about your setup. We'd love to see it and even showcase it on our future videos. So if you want to show off your physical or virtual workspace, send a picture or video to social-media at immersed.com and we'll pop it in one of these videos. If you found value in this video, go ahead and hit that like button. Also be sure to subscribe and click the bell icon to stay tuned for future videos. As always, stay hyper-focused. See you next time.